This is part five of our negotiation book, Distributive Tactics, and we're going to look at the vocabulary. So let's jump right into the vocab for this chapter. Afford. Afford. Afford, of course, is related to money. Can you afford $10? It's how much you're willing to accept or that you can accept how much can you afford? So you often use this in your negotiation by telling the other side, we cannot afford that much, or we can only afford $10.50. That's all we can afford. So this word is very key in your negotiation to help the other side understand what you're, what you're trying to convey as far as you're not, not your true target, because your true target is secret. Remember, always keep your secret secret, but what you want them to think. Approve. Approve, of course, is something you agree with and something you're going to go along with. Approve. So you use this in your negotiation to tell the other side that you approve or you don't approve. And it's very normal to use this to say, we cannot approve. Or often you'll say, my manager cannot approve this or my company cannot approve this. So that it's not personal. It doesn't sound like a personal issue. So approve can be positive or with a not not approve it can be negative authorize so authorize meaning someone in your company or some manager above you is going to say this is okay this is a great word to use in your negotiation because basically you're telling the other side it's not up to me you're talking to me but i cannot decide we can talk now, we can negotiate now, and I need to take this information and someone else must authorize it. So this is a great way for me to put off or to blame someone else. Uh, my manager cannot authorize this. My manager will not authorize this. That's a great word where you can use and often used in negotiation to try to convey that message of don't blame me and I cannot do it. Commit, of course, meaning to say something you agree with or that is true and that you're willing to go along with. So you can ask the other side, can you commit to that price? Or vice versa, you could say, we can commit to this price. We can commit to these shipping terms. That is, we guarantee it, we assure it, we're sure it's okay, we agree with it, everything can move forward. Very positive. Commitment, of course, the same idea. If that's the noun of it, the commitment. What commitments can you make? What commitments have you made? Are you going to stick to your commitments? Concession is giving something up. And remember, a negotiation cannot exist without two sides having some things they agree on and some things they don't agree on. If they don't agree on anything, then you cannot have a negotiation. So the key is the things you don't agree on, those few things that are left, you can make a concession. I can make a concession to you, meaning I give something up, or you can make a concession to me, meaning you give something up to me. Concession. Now you can use this in your negotiation by simply asking the other side, can you give us a concession on price? Can you give us a concession on shipping? Can you give us a concession so that we can have a longer relationship? Of course, in your negotiation, the more specific you are in asking for something, the more likely you are to get something. Contact. Contact, communication, uh, having communication, contacting another side. So we would use this just to get ready for our negotiation, asking the other side, when can we have contact? When can I contact you? Exploit. Exploit, take advantage of. We often think of this as a negative word, but in business I think we often, or in economics at least, it's not really a negative word. It just means to use some kind of resource to get something, to get some kind of benefit. In negotiation, however, exploiting the other side's weakness or something that you know about the other side means that you take advantage of that. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, of course, if you have some secret information or you know something about the other side or maybe you've guessed something correctly about the other side and then you exploit it, that is you use that information to get more, 
to win, in essence, then that's fine. But if you use it and you make the other side upset or angry, then of course they're not going to be happy to work with you in the future. So exploit does not necessarily mean something negative, although it can easily be negative if it's misused. It is our goal to exploit what we, the knowledge we know. It is our goal to exploit the information we have to make the maximum outcome. You would not use this in a negotiation, and if you did, it sounds kind of negative. So you, I guess you could say something like, are you exploiting the situation? Are you exploiting me? Are you exploiting our situation? Um, making the other side sound like they're doing something wrong. But mostly you would use this inside your group for planning purposes. Final push. Final push is the part of the negotiation where we're almost finished, but there's still something, maybe one thing left or two things left. And the final push is we're going to take, we're going to make a final push. We're going to try to get this over with by this one time, this one more attempt. Usually it's normal that in a negotiation you have many things you need to talk about, but at the very end there's one thing you're stuck on. I mean, if there wasn't one thing you're stuck on, the negotiation would be over very quickly, but it's not that simple because each side is trying to maximize. So usually it comes down to one thing or a couple issues that can be bundled together. The final push means we're going to try one more time to get it over with and complete the negotiation. It's very positive in a way. Now you don't want to have the final push too soon. You don't want to, at the very beginning, say, uh, now let's have the final push. No, this is really after a certain amount of time has passed and you're kind of tired out. Now, hold out means that you make the negotiation go on longer, maybe longer than it needs to, because you're trying to get something. So you hold out. You hold out for a higher price, or you hold out for a lower price, or you hold out for better terms. So holding out is quite normal. It is a, it is a tactic you can use to make the other side get tired or get worn out and they kind of give up. So you, you keep holding out. The problem with holding out is if you hold out too long, the other side may withdraw or find somebody else. So hold out. Now you can say this in your negotiation. You can come right out and say to the other side, are you holding out for a lower price? Because I'm not going to give you a lower price. If you're holding out for a lower price, then we should just end this negotiation because we cannot give you a lower price. So you can accuse the other side of holding out on purpose without really trying to cooperate in the negotiation. Influence. Influence means that you say something or you do something that makes the other side change their position, change their opinion. Of course, a very simple example, the most simple is when you go to buy something and you ask for a lower price and the manager says something like, I can't give you a lower price, That's that I'll lose money, that's already below my cost. I cannot sell you this cup because it would be lower than my price that I paid to buy it. And that will make you think, hmm, that must be truth. That's influencing you. Of course, all of the negotiation is about influence. And so I really emphasize to you to keep this in mind. Now, you do not use this word in negotiation. You use this word in your planning. So when you're planning, one thing you want to pay attention to is how can you influence the other side? Informal. Informal meaning not formal. Now, specifically in negotiation, this would mean not written down or not in a contract. Or informal means we just talked about the price a little bit, we talked about the product a little bit, we didn't really negotiate formally. So nothing we said is going to be, you know, something we have to stick to. It's something that we just discussed, so informal. And you can ask the other side, can I speak with you informally? Or can we have an informal negotiation, meaning just check things out? in view of, in view of, meaning that something, I want to talk about something, but related to other things. So I want to talk about maybe, let's say, this product and the price. Maybe I want to talk about the price. But I also want to talk about our relationship. So I want to tell you that if you can give me a lower price, 
in view of our long-term relationship. We've been working together for 10 years. I've been buying from you for 10 years. So in view of 10 years of buying from you, can you give me a lower price? So in view of is a great word, a great phrase to use in your negotiation because you can tell the other side. Remember, I gave you something in view of that. Or you can tell the other side, give me something now and I'll give you something more later, usually based on relationship in view of that. Inventory, of course, is how many products or products you have that are not sold yet, but they're already produced or so they're waiting. Inventory is not a good thing, of course, in business because too much inventory costs money and you're not selling it. The best thing is you produce and sell as soon as possible right away so you don't have any inventory cost. Now, why is inventory useful in our negotiation? Because the word inventory you can use to tell the other side about your situation. So you may say that this price, this product's price needs to go up. Why does this product price need to go up? Because the inventory is all sold out. There's no inventory. We need to wait for more to be produced. That means the supply is lower than the demand. It's so much in demand, we can't produce enough. So there's no inventory. On the other side, you could tell your, your negotiators to say something like, I know that your inventory is high. If your inventory is high, you should give me a lower price because I'm going to help you to sell some of your inventory. So this can be used in either way. Limit. Now the word limit means that there's a boundary. You cannot go over or you cannot go under. But this word is really great to use in your negotiation with your, with your counterpart. So when you're talking to the other people, the other company, you can tell them, this is my limit. I cannot go past this limit. My limit is $10 per unit. That's my limit. You make it very clear. You can say higher limit, upper limit, lower limit. Those are all great things to say. My upper limit is 550. My lower limit is 510. Maximize. Maximize meaning to get the best outcome, to get the most for the amount of input you do, the most output for the minimum input. Maximize. This is used in your planning. How do you maximize your negotiation. Remember, your companies are going to have a position, a starting position. That means a price, a product, a quality you can produce, a shipping you can offer. How are you going to maximize that situation? It's not used in your negotiation. It's used in your planning. Outcome. Outcome meaning the last thing that comes out, the final result. Of course, we want a positive outcome and both sides want to feel that they have a positive outcome, but that doesn't mean that it's win-win, that everyone got what they want. It doesn't mean that at all. It's just an outcome. So you can go ahead and use this in your negotiation and say something like, I'm looking forward to a positive outcome, or I hope we can wrap this up so we can have an outcome by next week. Payment, money transferred from buyer to seller, or product transferred from seller to buyer is kind of like a payment, but usually payment we're talking about is just the money. So it's very straightforward. Now we use this in our negotiation when we talk about, are you gonna send the payment? How are you going to make the payment? How are you going to complete the payment? So there could be many ways uh, um, uh, through our banking system or through an electronic transfer or through some kind of other system for payment. And we use this in our negotiation very normally. Priority. Priority, something is more important than something else. Priority. I can ask you, what is your priority? Is price your priority? Is quality your priority? Now, of course, we would all like to think everything is my priority. I want the lowest price, the best quality, and the fastest shipping, and the best product, and the best service. That's my priority. But usually priority means that some things are higher than others. And in your negotiation, you can say this. It's our priority to have a good relationship over the next five years with your company. That's our priority. So we're going to compromise and give you a lower price. That's one way to use priority. So priority is very positive and makes it sound like the relationship is positive, a great word to use, priority. 
Now you can use it to get something from the other side. You can say it's our priority to get a lower price, but it's not the same as saying that we have to get this, that it's our limit. Production. Production is at the company. They produce the product or the goods that they're going to uh, ship. So the production is back at the factory usually. Of course, we can produce services also, but usually production is related to physical products. Reconsider. Reconsider is a great word to use, especially in your negotiation, because you can ask the other side to reconsider their offer or reconsider their counter offer or reconsider their position. Can you please reconsider your position? We like your offer, but this price is too high. Can you reconsider your position? You could even ask, can you reconsider your price? You're just that one piece. So reconsider is a great word to use to ask the other side to think again and maybe come up with another offer. Reduce, meaning to lower or make smaller. So of course, when we're talking about things like uh, price, we're talking about increase or decrease or reduce, reduce your price. We can also use reduce for things in general, such as can you reduce your number of demands? So you have asked me for three things you want. Can you reduce that to two? If we can keep this one just the way it is and then we work on the other two, we can come to an agreement. Can you reduce your demands? Secret. Here's this word secret again. We're always talking about our secret information, aren't we? Of course, secret means not to tell someone to hide away from the other side. And specifically in negotiation, it's very important that we keep our information secret because we don't want the other side to know what our target is and what our limits are. So we need to keep information secret. You would not tell the other side, this is my secret either. You would not say, oh, uh, my target price is my secret. I won't tell you. No, usually you go ahead and tell them, but you don't tell them the truth, right? If your target price is uh, 70, maybe you're going to tell them something like uh, 80, and then they're going to compromise and come down and give you 70 and you get your goal. So your secret stays secret. Shipment, meaning to send the goods, send the product. And so one of the key points in our negotiation is we talk about shipment, how that's made. In our RPG, we're going to be talking about shipment. We make it uh, a little bit simplistic. We have slow, uh, medium, and fast shipping speeds. And of course, customers would benefit if they can get their product sooner to market. So the shipment. And in your negotiation, you often talk about the shipment. How will we manage the shipment? When will the shipment be made? We have to have the shipment before January, something like this. Special offer. Now we hear this all the time in English. This is some kind of special price we have or a special uh, maybe buy one and get something or buy 100 and you get 10 included or something like this, a special offer. So special offers are not necessarily about price, but they can be about price. Now here, the great thing about it is the special means kind of feels like one time, meaning we're going to make this one time and not again. So you can use this in your negotiation very effectively by telling the other side, you know what? Usually we would not give you $70, but we're going to make a special offer just for you for this one time. So using this word special offer, this phrase special offer is really great to give something to compromise, but not promise to always give it. And the other side will feel that it's a one time special offer. In fact, in English, you can even say a one time special offer, meaning never again. Split, split you break something into smaller parts. Now, when we negotiate, we often split up the negotiation into different parts. And you can use this word in your negotiation when you say something like, can we split the difference? Or can we split this into two? Or can we split this problem into three negotiations? So it's a very good word to use, meaning taking something bigger, making it smaller. Terms. The terms of the agreement are all of the details of the negotiation. What is the price? What's the quantity and the shipping and all of these kinds of things. Those are called terms. You use this in your negotiation when you're speaking because you just come out and say, 
these are our terms. Or you can ask the other side, what are your terms? We agree with your terms, or we cannot agree with your terms at this time. Tough stand. So in our chapter, we're going to talk about this tough, tough making a stand tough or easy. So a tough stand, tough meaning hard, um, not easy to change, uh, stubborn, um, just really tough to move, hard to move, tough, tough. We also can use tough with many things, like in meat. The meat is tough, meaning not tender, not soft. So a hard, something hard. In negotiation, a tough stand means I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give in. And a very tough stand, a tough stand could be I tell you one price and I just won't change. Or I tell you one package, one, one offer, and I just won't change that at all. I just stick with it over and over again no matter what. That's a tough stand. Upper limit. Upper limit, limit of course, meaning you cannot go past that. Upper meaning on the top side. So the upper limit, I cannot go. I cannot accept the deal that goes above that, my upper limit. Upper limit, as opposed to lower limit. Upper limit, lower limit, cannot go below this. Upper limit cannot go above this. And you use this in your negotiation very normally because you'll tell the other side, that's my upper limit. $70 is my upper limit. Valuation. Valuation is the value of something, and usually it's an estimate. So you will think, what is the value, or what does my company think is the value of this deal, or what is the value of this product, and you give it a valuation. Now you can use this in your negotiation by telling the other side that you feel the valuation is too high, or you feel the valuation is too low. So you can just come right out and say that, that's quite okay. Okay, that is the vocabulary for part number five. Thank you.